What is up, everybody? You are listening to The 20 Podcast. I am your host, DJ Spider. DJ this Spider. show is sponsored by BeatSource, the music streaming service for DJs that play everything. I am so excited to be back. It's our second show of the year. Uh, make sure you visit BeatSource.com for a 30-day free trial. Um, or if you want a 60-day free trial, put our code in, the 20, T H E. Zero. That will get you there. Let me know what you think. Make sure you hit me online at uh, DJ Spider on Instagram at DJ S P I D E R. Um, as far as me being on the road, some shows are canceled, some shows are on. I will be in Boston this Thursday, January 13th at Underground. Monday, I'm headed out to Texas. I'll be at El Chingon, Dallas, Fort Worth area, celebrating DJ Danny West's birthday. Uh, on a Monday night, then the 22nd, I'm headed out to Park City, Utah, downstairs, and then the 28th, I will be at Tau Las Vegas, then heading into February, I'm making my debut at the famous Sunday night party at Marquee Las Vegas on February 20th, so make sure to come out and hang with me then, you guys. Um, and so now, on to, the, to today's show. I'm super excited to share with you uh, this episode. I had so much fun recording it. On today's show, we got someone who is a true innovator, a pioneer, someone that has helped shaped, help shape what a DJ is today and helped to birth a genre of music known as Miami bass. You may have heard of it. You may have felt it running through your bones, crushing your lungs with earth shattering 808s. He's got one platinum record. He's got six gold records. I mean, I'm talking albums here, you guys. He's got that on the record not to mention a million other things he's done. He's always at the forefront of things. So not to mention all that stuff I said in the past, he's also built this amazing Twitch following for his live streams that he does multiple times a week. Plus he's got an incredible album on the way that I was able to hear a double album. Uh, so many legends up on there. Just to name a few, he's got Chuck D, Scratch Bastard, T-Pain. I've heard the songs, they're incredible. So. Look out for that. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation, and I'm super excited for you guys to hear it. So let's welcome to the show, DJ Magic Mike. It's the 20 Podcast, and we have got the legend, the OG in the building, DJ Magic Mike. Give it up. What's up, Spider? How are you, man? What? Oh, I am doing good. Thank you. How are you? I'm blessed, man. Everything is good over here. No great, complaints great. at all. Good, Amen. good. I'm so glad that we finally got to make this happen. Um, you know, I, I first, I think we first connected through the pandemic through Twitch, yep. really, through um, Twitch, which was yep. how so many DJs I connected with over the pandemic. And to this day, I'm still learning about DJs and music and songs. And, you know, even last night, I'm on your stream watching you yeah. and j just watching the community you've built and the support that you get. And I mean, you know, I want to talk about it even way beyond that, but it's so right. inspiring and so cool to see, you know, like I love yeah. that, that it goes down like that, you know? So yeah, me too. It's a blessing, man. You know, it was, yeah. uh, you know, when we first started doing it, it was uh, kind of like, okay, let's see where this goes. Because at that point, once again, <laughs> right. you know, it was 2020. And yeah. uh, we didn't know what was what you know what was going to happen, you know. And so uh, yeah. some of us uh, kind of got into Twitch and and made a career out of it. And you know, the rest is history as far as that's concerned. We just kept pushing and kept striving and kept trying to grow and make friends on Twitch. And you know, right. so the rest is history right now. You know, amazing. All right, well, we'll it, get it. In, we'll get into that. But I, I want people to know, you know. I know, obviously, a lot of people know who you are, but just in case, you know, some of our listeners are younger or, or come from different places and different parts of the world. So I just want people to be aware of your past accomplishments and, and just your influence, overall influence on the industry and on just being a DJ and how you've transformed even just the perception of a DJ. And uh, you've been doing this, you know, over 30 years. You're one of the pioneers of bass music as a whole and from Florida, which is where it began. I mean, yeah. I was, you know, going through your stats. I mean, you sold over 5 million records. You got a platinum record. You got six gold records. Uh, people like, you know, legends in the game that I look up to and everybody does, like Hubert and Craze have said that, you know, they give you credit for giving them ideas and getting into scratching and, you know, just 
all those kind of things. And, and we'll go through all of it. But I just want people to really have an understanding of that. You know, I, I saw you write wow. in your in the bio, you know, like uh, I forget what it was, but <laughs> one of the biggest superstars you never heard of or something like that, you know, and it was it's crazy when you go through all of the music that, you know, you've put out and all of the sort of transitions as a DJ and in genres that you've been mm -hmm. through. So just want people to know that. And um, yeah, I mean, I think, bef you know, as we get into it, do you think you could give us a brief history on how that all started and like where that began? Um, well, we're going to take it back to 1987. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Right. Um, 1987 was uh, pretty much the beginning of my music career. And uh, we were trying to do things back in Orlando, and, and um, it wasn't working for us in Orlando. And okay. uh, and then a guy by the name of Clady, back in uh, 87, he did a show here in Orlando. And uh, he didn't have a DJ, you know, for the show. And I was working for the radio station at that time. Yeah. And uh, the radio station, it was a radio station show. And uh, so he came to me, he says, would you, you know, spend my music for me, you know, for the show? And so I said, sure, I got you, you know. So I said, you know, give me the order, you know, your songs or whatever. And keep in mind, everything was on vinyl at that point. And um, so he had the records and he gave me the order or whatever. And so in the process of him performing his songs, I was just jazzing them up and just trying to make him sound better, you know. And then right, at the right. end of the show, at the end of the show, he came up to me. He says, man, what you did for me was amazing. He's like, you want to join in with me? You want to, you know, come come to Miami and work with me? He says, I'm working on a project right now in Miami. He says, it would be good if we could team up and do it together. So I said, sure, why not? You know, and um, so the rest was history at that. And that project was the Cool wow. Rock and Chaz project, the Boot the Booty. And, you know, everything stemmed from Creep Dog and Boot the Booty. And, you know, those songs were just huge for me. You know, right. and then uh, so I stayed with him for a little while. Uh, things went got went rocky. And uh, okay. and I left. I, I left and I came back home. And um but in the process of of us, uh, you know, recording all that stuff down there, we were also we had also started recording an album. And uh, back then, every you know, especially down south, every hip hop album had a DJ track on the album. And, right. Uh, on the and on this album, Magic My Custer Record was supposed to be the DJ track. But when I left, I took my song with me because oh, okay. it was 100 percent it was 100 my song and they had nothing to do with it so right i said well i'm leaving i'm out and then and that was the catalyst for my solo career and uh amazing that's the one that was on the first album with royal posse album and you know that one was on there drop the bass was on there that was the first album that's the album that went platinum so that's wow. what kicked my career yeah that's what kicked my out my career off that's crazy. That's what just proves you never, you know, when something starts going bad, you never know it could lead to one of the best things in your life, right? <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's like, you know, just, okay. I, I like, I'm breaking up with this know. person. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you go and, and take the song, and then it becomes this, it, your entire career is based off that. It was. The whole career was based off of that. So it was, it was so crazy that, you know, how that happened. And then yeah. I wound up becoming way bigger than all of them put together, you know, right. because it was just, it was just a different, it was just a timing, you know, just a different situation. So, you yeah. know, that, that was a, that was a, it was a gift and a curse, but it was a blessing in disguise at the same time, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you never know, you know, it seems like, oh, something good's happening to someone else or something bad's happening to me. And you never know when it could just seesaw, you know, to the other mm -hmm. side and, yep, and exactly. give you, give you something you never realized. That's, yep. that's incredible. And so how, how did you even get in? I mean, obviously, you know, DJing and scratching was big back then, but you, I feel like you take scratching to another level, especially for DJs back then, like for the amount that you do it on there and even how advanced it sounded for the time, you know, it was, wasn't just a little cut. No, like how, not, how did you really. get into it or learn? Um, just listening to records, you know, listening to, uh, you know, at that point, you know, uh, being in the South, I was still a hip hop head. I just, I liked hip hop, you know. Right. Um, but then when I would hear, you know, the Magnificent Jazz of Jeff, I guess that was 86-ish or whatever, you know, yeah. somewhere up in there. Uh, when I would listen to Ugly People Be Quiet, Cash Money, you know, those records, I would hear these cuts and I'm like, I, I love these cuts and I, I learned 
how to do them, you know, right. um, but being in the South, everything was fast, you know? Yeah. So everything had to be 130 plus for us. So I learned the cuts on the slower tempos, but then I just sat there and I kept messing with it until I learned it at my speed. And right. that was how I, that was how I always incorporated and learned how, you know, all the scratches. But then I started doing my own things back then, you know, just yeah. kind of, you know, like, <clears throat> and it was funny because I was having a, a conversation with Kubert about, this was probably, he, he hopped on, on our Twitch stream a couple, about a few months ago. And it tripped him out because he says that him and the scratch pickles back then, they were listening to my cuts and they couldn't figure out what I was doing. And so wow. he said, all of a sudden they realized that all my cuts were backwards. And they, they didn't, oh. and it took them a minute to figure that out. And people still to this day, they ask me, it's like, I can do this cut, but it doesn't sound like what you do. And I'm like, because nine times out of 10, if I'm doing a cut, it's always backwards. And that was an accident back then. But now it has came, it's just, it's how, it's my style, you know. That's so it's crazy. Like sitting, and what do you I mean backwards? It, like, not like uh, the wires are crossed, like hamster no, style. No, you no, mean no, like no, no. you're doing the pattern, the back, back opposite way? It go, it, the opposite way. It just, so if I'm doing like a regular little roll, you know, if yeah. I'm doing chirps, everything is backwards. And so that's what made it so hard for me when I started trying to learn flares and crabs right. because fader has to stay open. You know, when you yeah. start, but then because I'm backwards and the fader is open, it will sound like a normal cut when I would come in. You <laughs> right. Know? So I'm right. like, okay, that's wrong. That's wrong. And so then I had, and then shortcut, he came here when it was, God, this had to be 98, I want to say. We we went past another 10, 12 years up now. But our shortcut came right. in and he came to the house with me. He, we sat here for about a week, dude, and he kind of took me under his wing and he says, okay. This is how this is going to work. But see, the, he cuts hamster style. Right. I can't cut hamster. So Same, him I trying can't. To te- him trying to teach me was just like, okay, this is not working. You know, and so <laughs> then I kept messing and I kept messing with it. And I had to pretty much get it on my own. But he showed me the, the basis and the concept of how to get into the new style scratches. You know, so then I finally got that. And then my backwardsness came back into play. And so hits where I'm at today. Wow. Weird, right? That is weird. <laughs> that is weird. But that's it. That's, I mean, that's your own style. Like it really is. So it, it, it kind of, it, it kind of is. You know? Yeah. And then you can take the sounds you hear. I mean, that's the thing coming from back in the day. Like even when I was learning, I was listening to people like you, people like the scratch pickles craze. Like you're saying Rob Swift executioners, yeah. all of them. And, like you said, they, a lot of them would do hamster style or backwards or, but I didn't have it, even any friends to practice with barely, you know, so I'm just alone. Like, okay, I'm trying to make, I don't know. How's he going? Da, 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 you know, or whatever the sound right. is. And yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. And same kind of thing. You just have to sort of develop your own style. And then when you yeah. try to learn the technical, uh, you know, this is how you're supposed to do it. I can't even get my brain to then do it now because I'm so used to my own. You're so used to, yeah, you because you don't even think about it way. anymore. Yeah, it's like if people ask me now, I was like, how are you doing? I'm like, I can't. One day, uh, well, it's back to Twitch again. We did a. I was doing. Somebody asked me how to do a cut, and so I went to my overhead cam and I was trying to show them in yeah. slow motion, you know, how I do a cut, and I was like, wow, this is too slow for me, you know. So I'm like. <laughs> trying to do it and i had to go to my normal speed but then it was like wow that's too fast and i'm like i'm a horrible teacher i said i'm, I'm a horrible teacher i can't it's yeah. hard but it's that muscle memory same with me like it took me months years of doing certain movements with my hand until i was like i got it but like i couldn't explain to someone how i did it and i couldn't do nope. it at all the tempos um now, and yeah, teaching and is, is hard yeah right and the thing is with cubert with cubert was because i went to cubert's house um okay uh, this was same same time frame, ninety eight, ninety nine ish. Cuba said three words to three words to me, and it stuck with me, and it still sticks with me to this day. Cuba said repetition is key. Yeah, and it stuck with me, and I'm like, wow. Now when you think about that, just like the more you keep doing it, you know, you start off slow and you just keep doing the same pattern over and over. The more yeah. you don't think about it anymore. You know, it's yeah. like, it's nothing for us to go up and do a chirp. I mean, just, but then the average person trying to learn, they can't figure out that we got to bring it in and cut it off, you know? Right. And so to try to, to try to teach that 
is is hard, but I could show you all day, you know. Right. So it's just it's just weird. So when, when Cuba said that repetition is key, I'm like, I got it. I understand. You know. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you just have to get it to the point where you're not thinking about it anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think even teaching is a skill that that seems easier from the outside because like i had dj revolution on who is an you know incredible at scratching yeah rev's the best i mean from his attitude from everything everything about him i love him yeah but to listen to him explain to me because he has his own dj school now and i'm like how do you do you have you know booklets how do you know how to teach like because I, sometimes i try to teach and i have the same feeling as you i oh, uh, i'm not I a good teacher teach. i don't know how to do it and it teach. he it teach. took him he was saying i forget what he said but something like 10 years to know how to do it it was almost like djing he had to go through so many ups and downs to learn how to teach properly so i think it's its own skill you know and people like mm-hmm. dj hoppa who ran scratch academy and the beat junkies even like i'm yeah. sure they have had to create this curriculum and learn how to teach people and learn how to scratch different mm-hmm. ways because mm-hmm. yeah i i try to teach people and i'm like no you just do that thing that's in my brain that i can't explain <laughs> to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, don't you know what i'm saying um mm-hmm. oh that's I, that's I crazy I, even back in the yeah. you know when we had the royal posse back in the day you know and i had djs in the, you know in the crew right. we would practice together but mm-hmm. i could not teach them you know, I, I just yeah. I could not teach them. It was, it, I, I was like pulling teeth. I I just could not. And they were trying to look at me and learn things. I'm like, I'm just a horrible teacher. And I still tell people that to this day. I'm I'm a horrible teacher. I, I don't <laughs> it's know hard. how to teach that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it's know how hard. To teach that. Yeah. Um, well, well, going back to how you said how everything started and and your career started, that first. I read a story about that first gold album you had was that you didn't even know you had sold 500,000 copies. Your goal was just to kind of do something for funds, maybe sell 10, 20, 30,000, get on the charts. 500 wasn't even a thought. And then you didn't even know that had happened, that milestone, right? You were at a show and they came and presented you with the plaque. Yeah, that was actually my second album. And uh, okay. we didn't go back. Yeah, that was Bass's name of the game, which was my that was my mark. That that album was my mark. Um, yeah. But we just uh, the first album was the one that we just kind of wanted to get it out. You know, that was the one with Magic Mike Custer record on it and uh, and dropped the yeah. bass. And we just wanted to get that album out. You know, it's like if we could sell twenty, you know, twenty thousand copies. You know, we're we're good. Right. And um, but in the process of all of that going on. I uh, started having problems with the, with the, you know, with the, uh, the crew, and I I went to the studio by myself and just decided to record the second album, and which was Bass's name of the game, and it was um, supposed to be an instrumental album. That's that's all it was supposed to be, and it was just something to do, something for fun, to put right. it out. And when we put Bass's name of the game out, it just took off like a bat out of hell, man. And uh, we just, <clears throat> and then we uh, redid Drop the Bass to put it on there. That was the remix, uh, Drop the Bass 2. Um, and we just, we just put it out and it kind of took over the Southeast. And then the distributors started picking it up and it started just moving further and further and further west. And then wow. before you knew it, we were, on, we were on Billboard and we're like, oh my God, what is going on with this? You know, keep in mind, we still not, not thinking where we were with sales. And yeah. then finally, um, and then we still just, they kept saying, man, we're getting close, you know, to gold. And I'm like, really? And I'm still not even, you know, thinking about it. And then we had a show in Orlando. And uh, it was a huge show. Um, uh, it, it was called Jam Fest back then. It was like, oh, God, me, Jodeci, Tracy Spencer. I mean, it was, you know, like a huge radio show. Right. And we're on, and we're on the stage. And um, the radio station came out along with the president of the label at that point. And right in the midst of the show, they came out and they had the gold records in their hands. And I'm looking at this plaque and I'm like, what are they bringing out? And then they presented the gold record to us in the middle of the show. And I didn't even know it was gold yet. Yeah, I didn't even know the album was gold yet. So in the process of that, you know, that, that escalated us to a totally different, you know, plateau at that point. Then we went back to count the sales for the first album. And then when we went back to count the sales for the first album, we were over a million copies on that one. And we didn't even wow. realize it because, because we just kept selling. We just kept selling. We just kept selling them. 
And um, once That's we crazy. once that yeah once that milestone happened, then we we're like, and the thing is, we went through so much trouble with RIAA because they didn't want to believe that we had sold that many records. And so I mean, this was they came the uh, they sent accountants from RIAA to the office to sit and count sales. Oh and, my God! And called it yeah, and and called distributors to find out how many you know this one sold and that one sold and they and then once they realized this is this is true, you know, and then they were like wow, and then they finally you know, but this was stuff that that was happening that they didn't tell me because they were trying to keep it a, a secret from me because they didn't want me to know yet until they wanted to present that plaque to me, you know. So that's the stuff oh, that was that's going on incredible. behind the scenes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's it's almost like base base Miami base music has been hated on by the RIAA, you know, the the yeah. industry is from the beginning like trying to hold it down any way possible and not believe yeah. that that many people would like it. And it's still not a lot of uh, you know, and, and the genre kind of did whatever it was going to do back in 97 98. It kind of subsided and went on, you know, right. went to went to its glory, you know. Um, yeah. But there's still not a lot of bass artists that went gold. Less more platinum, you know. I can count no. them on one hand. No, I can count them on one hand. You know, so it's right. just like back in the day, there was only two of us. It was us and two live and loop, you know. Right. And that was yeah. it. And that was it. And everything else was just kind of everybody just doing their thing, you know. But then you also had a lot of labels that did not want their artists to know how much they were selling, you know, yeah. in the process. So a lot of you know, hiding was going on with artists, too. So. You know, you just don't know, and you know, but right. as of right now, you know, as of right now, you know, I want to say, uh, base wise, for platinum status in the '80s, early '90s, it was just us two, you know. So now That's you got amazing. you you got some Atlanta artists now, you know, that did Miami bass, and some of them went platinum. Low job, you know, with the social death bass, you know, that went platinum, and Quad City, yeah. you know, Six Nine Boys, all of those, you know, they they got plaques now, but. In the beginning, it was us, you know, right. and still it's like five of us with platinum plaques, you know? Yeah. So Amazing. It's, it's kind of cra crazy, you know? It is crazy. Yeah. And there's something about, yeah, I guess how much bass, you know, resonates, not to do like a pun, but like down there, like in Atlanta and Florida, like in the Southeast, I mean, bass is still to this day the main sound, one of the biggest sounds. And also, like you said, with the, the fast tempos, like you were at, what, 130, 140 like, like beats per minute, and it's almost like the new stuff is just as fast but just half-time down. Half -time, you know, with the, yeah, the snares are yeah. just halfway yeah. taken out. But yep. it still carries on from 30 years ago. The bass the sp speed of it of the hi-hats and everything like yeah it's crazy how that has never yeah. <clears throat> gone away and it's just always nope. evolved and stayed as evolves. like a running line yeah yep and that was very integral when you listen to edm especially trap you know it's just oh, very huge. very very it's very integral you know into right. that now so right know, and it's crazy how Bass music is such a huge thing in EDM. It's just called bass music, you know, and, and right. it's kind of like that wouldn't exist without without you guys in a way. You know, I mean, yeah. that's mm -hmm. and it plays into the same people that were loving your albums back then who are older now. Those it's the same mindset of just loving yeah. that bass, that frequency. It gets you into the music like no other. It yeah. almost like merges your brain and body like yeah. within the music. You know, I remember going to raves yeah. and just being like drum and bass and anything with that crazy the 808s and the sub bass would just love I kind of go man. through love, you love our, yeah we love ourselves man <laughs> yeah how did i mean love what was the bass. first what was the first drum machine you were using was it the 808 to, to make 808, those or 808 808 crazy i still have my 808 to this day i will never let that drum machine go ever. that's incredible you still have the same 808 that you made all that I stuff with same one yep i yeah. love that and uh we went from an 808 to a SP1200, and then SP1200 is when I learned how to fine tune the the uh, the 808 kick, and okay. then turn the kick off, and then leave the sustain up, and you sample it, and then oh. that was how we. And then we got into the middle, and then we found a nice loop spot where if you hit it, it'll just sit there, and you won't hit a reverberation of the 808. So when you hit it, oh. it will just be boom, and you won't. It, you never heard it looping back 
you know, and so, oh. we kind of, so I kind of mastered that and uh, no one had done that before me, you know, so it was like, but that was my thing, you know. It was, it was like, like a way that to extend the sub bass rather than using an yes. analog keyboard to like yes. create the frequency, you sampled right. it, put it in the SP, found that perfect part in the waveform where it could loop and loop just back. be like, yeah. right, yeah, and just loop right. back. Oh my God. Right. And then I would take the 808 kick and sample that, but I would turn the sustain off. So then the kick would hit and it would be boom. And so every time, you know, you hit the kick, at least you have an attack on it because if you don't put the kick on it, then there's no attack. And that's right. just, it's just a rumble under the, you know, under the bottom end. So that yeah. was, uh, that was, that was our thing back then, you know? That's so dope. Oh my God. And, and to this day, I mean, you, any people use 808s. I mean, just one, you know, it just, it's just crazy the connection of 808s and bass, you know, through through all the, yeah. all the years. Um, so I mean, so you've been doing this a really long time. Obviously, we, yeah, we w- went through probably just little bits and pieces of it. What do you think gives you the ability to continue adapting? You know, I noticed that you're always at the forefront of technology, even with with Twitch and with the DJ equipment you're using and the mixers. And, you know, you definitely don't seem like someone that gets stuck on like, oh, well, I use the 808. I got to use it forever. You're like, I'm, this is a part of me, but you keep adding on. So what do you think are some of the reasons you've been able to keep going and adapt? I just love music, you know? Yeah, and, yes. Uh, I just, I wouldn't, I don't want to be that guy that, you know, the get off my lawn guy, you know, get off my lawn, <laughs> yeah. you know. Right. I, I don't ever. There's don't a lot of get off my guy. lawn DJs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, I just like to learn and I like to experiment, you know, and I get in and I, I kind of delve in and figure out, you know, it's like I tell people, I don't need to learn everything a machine can do. I just need to learn what I like, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so I get in and, you know, once I get into a machine, I figure out, oh, that's cool. I like that. That goes into the, you know, into the arsenal. I'm like, okay. I'm going to use that one day, you know, and you just keep learning, you know, right. And, um, uh, that's, that's my thing. I, I enjoy learning. Uh, and still to this day, I just enjoy it. You know, I like figuring things out, figuring out what makes things tick, you know? Uh, um, yeah. you know, you know, it's like, even when I got the S11, I was like, mm, I'm not a fan of this mixer, you know, and I wasn't a fan of it. I was like, I yeah. like my S9 better. You know, yeah. and um, and then I started getting into it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna figure out what I like on this mixer, you know. Right. And then and that's what I did. And I started getting in, and I started getting in. I say, now I like this mixer, you know. So yeah. you just you, you don't don't hinder yourself. Just get in, dive in, you know, and uh, you know, just continue to evolve, continue to learn, you know, because the more you learn, the more you will stay relevant in whatever's going on. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, that's really what. It seems like the key to a lot of people that stay young and inspired is curiosity. It is it, it almost like a mix of, um, like I've had people on that teach, and that sort of keeps them young. Like they're able to connect with the youth and teach. And I know we were saying that's not necessarily our strong suits, <laughs> but being no, curious, not, uh, you know. But the curiosity and the wanting to learn is almost the thing that just keeps you young and keeps you hungry and keeps you having fun, which is the whole yes, exactly point of it. You know, right? You know, and then once you have something new, and then you you push and you keep growing, you grow with that. But in that process something else might come in your path, you know, and right. So don't negate, don't negate it, you know, just say, yeah. huh, what's that? You know, stay, yeah. stay on your current path, but bring something else in, you know, because you never know, you know, whatever that is that could be coming in, it could be something that could be another path that you can also bring in. And now you have two different things going on at the same time. Yeah. Know? Yeah. That's so true. Mm-hmm. Um, and what about like when you were going through, you know, the 80s and those albums were blowing up and even in the 90s and doing that, I'm sure you went on some crazy tours and got to perform we, we, in some crazy we, places. Yes, we, we had a lot of tours back then. Um, we did. Um, I pretty much. Do you have any, any special tour stories or anything that stands out in your mind of either places you know, or crazy stuff that happened? I don't um, because. Right. Most most of the time on tours, people know how tours go. It's like for us back then, it was like you're never in the city. You know, as soon as the show is yeah. over, you're on the bus. You're on the bus. Yep. You're you're riding, 
if you're at a hotel, you're going to the hotel after the show to check out, you know, to True. get your stuff. You know, <laughs> yes. you're on a bus, you're going to the next city. You know, mm-hmm. you get to the next city, eight or nine o'clock in the morning. You go to the hotel, you finally get some sleep, you wake up, it's sound check, <laughs> you know, and it's a never ending cycle. And then so yeah. it's like people think that touring was fun. I'm like, no, touring was not fun. You know, it was just <laughs> it was fun performing, you know, in right. the actual shows, but touring wasn't wasn't fun for me. And uh I I don't really care to tour, you know, anymore. I I would rather get on a plane and go someplace and perform and then come back home. You know, yeah. the days uh the days of sleeping on a bus, that's man, I'm too old for that now. I'm, those those days are over for me. <laughs> I, I understand. I can't do it. Can't do it. No, you know, I've been uh, around. The, I've been around the world playing music. Um, you know, it was funny though because I did have a tour. This was me and DJ Assault. Oh my god. Oh man, I love and, DJ Assault. Um, this was. <laughs> oh man, he and I we had a tour together overseas, and we went through. Uh, it was London. Hold on, it was the UK. We went to Scotland, France, Germany. We did all of that. Uh, we were there for 30 days and for 28 days. That's what we did every day. And we were, I can't, it wasn't a bus. It was almost like a, kind of like a RV kind of thing or whatever and traveling right. around on that. And the only time that we really had, uh, you know, to take time off was like when we went to Scotland and they would take us to the train station and we'd take the train up to Scotland and then the bus would go on, the RV would go on up, you know, and meet us. And then, you know, but um, that was really pretty much one of the last tours that I had. And after that one, I said, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I said, I, I can't do this. You it's know. it's brutal. Like we, you know, on one hand, we are lucky to do what we do and yes. don't take it for granted. Yep. But we're also human beings. And there comes a point yeah. where you know what you like and don't like, and what you could put up yeah. with. And and yeah. it, it it's hard. I mean, I learned even on I got that Blink One Eighty Two poster back here. Like yeah. that was, I think I don't know sixty something cities you know an entire summer almost four months and i remember before i went on it they were like you know are you sure you want to do the whole tour um i know you you know you have a kid a young kid you you you, you're going to be away from your family all summer i said no you don't understand like i've been on tour already for 10 years straight i fly in i fly out they're like no you're not going to be able to do that i'm like yes i am you don't understand my life Nope. <laughs> oh my God. I did not understand. We were like you said, we're on this bus nonstop. I ended up seeing them for a day and a half, like in Iowa, because I was able to like escape for a second and then get back. Yeah. But I could not get home because you're going city to city to city, which city to city really, city. you know, yeah, it's crazy. Like, so I, I learned about that and sleeping on buses and uh, being around a lot of other people it's like uh, summer camp. Not, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't. It wasn't a lot of fun for me. Yeah, you know? I mean, and I've, and and I've, I've had multiple tours, and I'm like, I'm sure. You know, when you're younger, when you're younger, you can deal with it a little bit better. Of course. But when you get, yeah, but when you're older, like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm done doing that. <laughs> you know. Oh my and then, god. Uh, and then my manager was talking about you know, trying to uh, do a tour for the new album, and uh, and I'm like, no, 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 we're we're not doing that. I can't. We can't do. That. Well, I said, we can go. We'll go out and do shows. You know, right? Uh, I will hop right, in, but not a whole I, city to city no, to city. No, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I can't handle that. No, that's that's too no. much. And and no. like, also, that's the beauty of Twitch. That's the beauty of you know the metaverse or whatever. This whole yes. virtual yeah. world that we've entered into. You can go tour India and South Africa and. Utah in the same day because everyone's yeah. watching you from there, you know, and of course t- it's different, I, but right, right. Right. And I tell everybody every time we're on, you know, when wife and I, we, you know, when we're on Twitch, I tell everybody, you know, because you hop in and I, we do a Twitch roll call and then people start saying where they're from. And then all of a sudden you, you know, we see, you know, Africa, you know, Australia, you know, Brazil, you know, Mexico, you know, the UK and, and all of these people in. And then I said, okay, we're worldwide all at the same time right now. Let's do this. You know, let's have some fun. You know, because right. you've got so many people from so many, and we get a lot from Germany, like a lot. Like Germany is is huge for us on Twitch. 
And, That's um, so interesting. Germany just must love song. DJing because same here, like one of the biggest countries that listens to the podcast, and then the same with uh, Twitch and different things. Germany's big on there. I wonder yes. why. Germany is yeah, they're huge, and, and I don't know, but it's uh, it's always fun. And when we're on, it's like nine p.m. our time, and then Germany will come on, and I have to say, "Good morning, Germany." I see you, you know, <laughs> and then, because it's three in the morning their time, yeah. You know, but it doesn't matter to them, and then, and the longer that we go the more they wake up over there and then they start waking up and then they start hopping in, you know, into the That's stream. Crazy. So it's like, yeah. wow, I say this is, this is insane, you know, but, uh, we're worldwide at one time, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's always fun. I love, I love That's, our Twitch fam. That's dope. And, uh, and so back to like when you were, you know, doing those tours and, and really when, when your records were blowing up, um, at that time, you seem to have, you seem to be doing a bunch of brand deals. Like I know you were part of uh, like this Coca-Cola, um, yeah, Coca-Cola. trio yeah. of DJs yeah. and a pioneer deal and sure signed you, you know, for and, because and of your rain. scratching yeah. right. and, rain. and rain. Yeah. And so, rain, and, yeah. and, and that wasn't really happening. I don't think for DJs back then. No. Right. I mean, it wasn't, no. I'd never no, heard of it. So, no. So what was that like? I mean, just the Coca-Cola thing itself. Like, what was what was that? How did that come about, and what did you um, do? Well, at that point, my cousin Scratch was staying with me down here. He had so wait, you just mentioned my cousin Scratch. So is that DJ Scratch? Yeah, that's my cousin. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scratch is my first cousin. Um, wow. He was, okay. Yeah, so he he was down here with us, uh, staying. So both you guys, here. amazing pioneers of DJing, and also incredible at scratching. That's mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah, so he was he was staying down here with us at that time. That was right after the uh, the EPMD breakup, okay. and um, he needed to get out of New York for a little bit. And uh, so he came down here. He was with us, and some kind of way a phone call came, uh, and we got calls at the same time. So someone contacted, um, got in touch with me through my manager, but then somebody contacted him through uh, the guy that was managing him at the time, not realizing okay. that we were all down, down here in the same house. And, <laughs> That's um, crazy. And so, and so they wanted to do this DJ commercial, you know, what they called it, it was Coca-Cola, it was called Three DJs. And so then uh, Scratch was like, and, and the thing is, it's funny because Scratch is the one who pulled me in because I was like, I don't have time for that. I don't want to do no, no Coke commercial. I'm not doing that. And Scratch kept saying, you, do, you need to do this commercial. You need to do this commercial. The commercial was supposed to be me scratching Jazzy. Jazzy turned it down. And so uh, because Jazzy turned it down, they brought in Plastic Man. And uh, <clears throat> so Scratch kept saying, you need to do the commercial. We need to do the commercial. And I'm like, you can do it. I'm not doing it. You know, <laughs> and at the very at the very last minute, I said, OK, I'll do the commercial. And so then we were on a on a plane and the next day flying to L.A. to go do this, wow. uh, to go, uh, do the Coke commercial. And then it, it debuted during the Grammys. So that was the first time they showed this. So it was like, wow. I said, okay, I'm like, okay, this is real. You know, it was, yeah. Uh, it was, yeah, it was crazy, but it was a fun commercial. Um, took us all day to record that thing. You know, it's just like, we got, we got to the warehouse five thirty in the morning and they had started setting up because they needed the way the light, I mean, it was the way that they had everything planned out. They needed this light coming up from the sun at this certain time you know so like we had to film this and then certain and then we take a break and it was it was crazy you know but we didn't leave that thing until probably 3 a.m so we all we were oh. there for almost 24 hours yeah i was gonna you say know? it was just a full day it like was. literally wow that's and scratch, incredible and scratch had, and scratch had to drink so much coke you know and the thing <laughs> is it's not real soda you know so he, we didn't realize that it's not real soda because you can't drink that much because of the carbonation and you keep belching so it looks like Coke, but it's not Coke. What it's was like it, like water? Down, watered down Coke, yeah. Like oh, so you get Coke. the little taste of it. but Right. 20% Coke and 80% water. I'm like, I don't want, you know, I'm glad I didn't have that part. That was, and then the bottle had to be in the right spot. The Coca-Cola has to, has to show. They would go with an Evian uh, spray can and spray the bottle to make it oh, look like it was cold. To, to get oh, the blissing wow. on all those little so, tricks you and, see and it was so much i learned you know when we did that commercial i'm like wow i would never look at these commercials the same ever again you know no. but that that was a that was a fun that was a fun experience that we you know got to do that's so cool and you had mm -hmm. also had to deal with sure and with pioneer yes. um yes. 
which not many DJs had and even have to this day, probably. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. Oh, that's the crazy. Sure, the, the Sure Deal uh, came up by way of uh, Kubrick, actually. Oh, um, okay. I, I got to met. I got hold on. I got to meet uh, Greg Riggs, who was mm. uh, over uh, artist uh, artist A and R artist relations uh, through Sure. I met him at a DMC competition in San Fran when I was there with with. Uh, you know, Cuban and uh, and Scratch Pickles, oh, got and so it. when I got to and when I so when I got to meet him, he naturally he knew me, and uh, and then he asked me what how I thought about the you know what I thought about the needles, and I'm like, you know, naturally I'm not going to say oh I don't like your needles, you know, because at that <laughs> point I was just getting in, I was still an order farm guy at that point, yeah. and um, so I'm like, no, I love Shores, you know, and uh, <laughs> so the rest is history. I was like, he was like, well, you know, let's talk, you know. And so when we talked or whatever, he came to Orlando and then brought all kinds of stuff and, you know, showed me this and showed me that and and then uh, wanted to know if I would be interested in doing an endorsement deal, you know, with them. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and then we, you know, dotted eyes across T's and, and the rest was history. But me doing that endorsement deal with Sure was the greatest thing in the world for me because not only for the needles, that started me on my in-ear collection. Uh, yeah. You know, my because at that point the they had this box, and it's what they did, you know, for singers when they when with the in ears, and right. so it was a wireless pack. And I started using that, I want to say in 1999, and then finally in like 2000, maybe 2001, I finally went to an audiologist and had one made for my ear, and it is the best thing. And I've been on that thing for 20 some years now. And I can't really? go back to headphones. Yeah, I can't go back to headphones. That's it, so interesting. It, it, cha- it changed wow. my life. Yeah, it changed so my life. You so you use in ears, you, but you're saying you use a wireless pack, or you use in ears that you plug into the mixer? Uh, uh-uh, in ears that a uh, wireless pack. How do you hear no. the? How do you hear it like real time? With what there's, you're doing, there's no there's no latency. It's it's a wireless pack that there's a you know naturally the box, right? Uh, with the antennas. The sure oh. and I still use it still to this day. So it's a sure pack that goes quarter to the mixer. So it goes, you know. Uh, oh, so it's it's like how someone the, would use a wireless mic while there's no delay. Thing. Like because you have right. your own little same broadcaster. Thing. Right. Ah, right. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I still use that to this day. It's just it's part of my life. You know, when I, I wonder have to why other headphones. DJs don't use that. I've never even thought about that because you ha- uh, I have in ears too, but you have to plug them in. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't plug mine in. I plug it into the pack, you know. So the pack wow. always. Hold on, might be. Is it right here? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, right let's there. see. There's, let's see. There's my pack. Yeah, there's there's my pack. Right, it's like what so, you see like singers use, you know, or yeah, guitarists yeah. or in bands. Yeah. yeah, same thing. And so I take the the uh hit the uh wireless thing the headphone down my shirt in my ear and I go, you know. Wow. And so uh because but then it's a four channel mixer on the box. So if you go someplace and your monitor system sucks, then you could take it and then run output to the channel three and four. And then I put my right ear in and I use that as my program and I mix with my left. Oh, got much, it. Yeah it's, pre- yeah, it's pretty much the same thing because my monitors, I listen in my right ear anyway. So if yeah. the monitor system sucks, I say, okay, we'll bypass this. And then I just run, run the output right into my, into the sure mixer. And then we go right. from there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I never, I've never seen another DJ do that and I hadn't heard of that. So it makes perfect sense and seems easier as long as you're cool with having like that pack on you. Um, yeah, but it's, it's about the size of a cassette tape. It's small. Right. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not big at all. And it just clips right on. So I, I don't yeah. clip it onto, I don't clip it onto my waist. I just put it, I let it hang on my pocket, you know? Do you or ever have, have on, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was like, but uh, if you have a belt on, you just click it onto your belt and, and you go and the volume knob is right on the, is right on the pack. So, right. You know, and the thing you is, ever have, oh, sorry. Do you have problems hearing the crowd ever? Like, is that ever a thing? Like, or talk, you know, no, but, does that no ever... because my right, my right ear is always open. Oh, got it. Yeah. My right Crazy. ear is always open. Yeah. But when that's in my ear, the left ear, because that, that is my, you know, my main, that's what, what I'm listening to. Um, right. When I'm when I'm going through that ear, all sound is blocked. I hear nothing in that ear at all. But then okay. I use my right ear. I use my right ear to listen to the monitors, listen to everything else that's going on. Crazy. 
It was and weird one at of, first. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, it takes getting used to, but uh, mm-hmm. it sounds sounds pretty beneficial. Um, mm-hmm. And I think another thing with sure at the time, right, was that you were, you know, what would go forward to be called an open format DJ, right? But that wasn't yeah. really, I mean, obviously all DJs in the beginning of DJing just started as open format DJs. We were just DJs. Yep. But I think you were especially known as someone that played every genre and came from a certain area but and a certain type of music and genre, but could play yeah. everything and would play different tempos. And I think a lot of the times, even like a Q-Bert was known as the person that would scratch or it was like house DJs or hip hop DJs. And it was right. very split, split up. Right. right. So you were, right. I think they came to you because I mean, you're one of the original open format DJs and people that have the ability to, to play all genres, but in a I high like, quality like way. Right. Yeah. I like everything, you know? So uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because whether we're playing old school, if we're playing Miami bass, or if we're playing hip hop or, or EDM, whatever, I like it all. You know, it's like right. when I tell people, I might not like every song in every genre, but I find what I do like in that genre, and I that is what I play, you know. Right. Yeah, that's the truth. That's what I tell people all the time because they're like, I don't want to play in clubs. I hate clubs. And I'm like, how can you be so general? Like, you know, and yeah. they're like, I hate club music. Or you really want to play in a club and play all music you hate? I'm like, no. It's like you find what you, you like what within you like. every single thing you're going to do. Yeah. We all love music. We all love everything. I guarantee every genre has something you're going to like. And then that's how you combine it with your own self and style and how you create your style. And then and you, you present go. it. Right with the skills you've you know honed in on and the scratches and yeah. your backward scratch you know and whatever yeah. is part of your own thing so that's what i try to tell people too don't just cut off something because you think you don't like it or that's not your thing or it's like you, that's not your crowd like really as djs we have the ability to f- find what we like in everything and i think that's important yeah. to remember and I, I like i like teaching people new music i enjoy yeah, me too. teaching people I enjoy teaching people new music. I enjoy someone saying, what's that? You know? Yeah. I like that. Me too. And then I'm I like, oh, it. you don't know this? Okay, this is what this is, you know? Right. And I like I like teaching people what music is, especially if it's a genre that they're not accustomed to or something that they're not used to hearing. You know, right. because especially with me in a club setting, I, I'll bounce everywhere. You know, it's just like I'm one way and then another and... You know, but nothing stays on long. So I'm like, if you don't like it, it'll be off in 30 seconds. Just chill out. Enjoy it. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I tell people live. I'm like, don't worry. Trust me. We will get there. I'm playing everything. Yeah. Okay? It's yeah. not your own personal night. Right. <laughs> like, right. Exactly. it's everybody's night. So. Yeah. Exactly. But that's that's cool. the old school. But that's the old school mentality of us. Because. It is. We, we learned way back in the day what to do, what not to do. And what we like, what we don't like. And if it's a song that I don't like, I just don't play it, you know. Right. Uh, I guarantee you, you won't miss that song because you want to hear it. You won't even you won't even realize that you didn't hear it, you know. Right. And, yeah. and once I'm done, I don't care what you're thinking at that point because I'm done, you know. But, you know, <laughs> I just want you to just enjoy it, you know. Just enjoy what's going on, you know. Enjoy yeah. what, what I'm doing. Enjoy, enjoy what I'm presenting to you, you know. Right, right. Um. And so, so, you know, we keep alluding to Twitch and talking about it here and there, but, um, what, you know, like I said earlier, you've been, you know, really big on, on doing Twitch and it seems like a big part of your DJ career now. Um, what have it's you learned? Life. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, and I love how you have your wife on there. I love how you talk to the crowd a lot. You know, it's not just like, okay, watch me do this thing. Like, I I watch your stream and I see you do everything from solo scratch things to playing old music to new music to talk and then really just interacting and talking with everybody and then having your wife on there is just sets this vibe of like fun. I can't explain what it is, but like I feel like I get the vibe from you guys. You guys like love each other and have such a good vibe and you know play yeah. around with each other, give each other shit, but like drink together and have fun and she knows what's up yeah. with the music and um so like yeah can you tell us a little bit about like the starting of twitch and what you've learned and some of the things you like about it and and maybe even your future plans for it um let me go back to this all started uh last year 
uh, 2020. Well, we're 2022. God, time is well. I, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> but this this goes back to my birthday in 20, 2020, uh, May. And at first, we were uh, everyone kept saying, "You need a live stream. You need a live stream." And I'm like, nah, "I don't want a live stream. I'm not doing that Dude, because at that point, we're still thinking the world's going to open right back up. You know? Yeah. And uh, exactly. Well, well, the world didn't open back up, you know, so we're no. like, OK, the, OK, what do we do? You know, and so um, we decided to do a multi stream thing on my birthday, which was May of 2020, a couple months right. after the pandemic started. And uh, okay. we're going to do Facebook and we're going to do Twitch and uh, and we're only going to do one and done. And that was it. And uh, right. And so it was so weird because on Facebook for my birthday, we went Facebook live. We had probably 25,000 people watching on Facebook. And on Twitch, we had hmm, maybe 20, 30, <laughs> you know, and um, because it just was not the platform that everyone knew at that time. Right. Yeah. And um, and so we kept doing it. And then the more we kept doing it, the more Facebook kept shutting us down. And then we kept staying on Twitch. And so eventually we just said, you know what, let's um, let's say the hell with Facebook. We're done with this. You know, let's let's focus on the Twitch thing and and see where we can get you know with this one. Right. And um, <clears throat> so we kept going around and bouncing around and making friends on Twitch and meeting people and going to different channels. And uh, I am I'm not a person that says who I am. You know, I'll just say, hey, I'm yeah, I'm like nice to meet you. You know, that's that's <laughs> right. my thing. And um, but then people started realizing who I was. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah. And so then we just kept working and we kept pushing the channel and kept making new friends and, and, and then the rest is history with, you know, with Twitch at this point, you know, yeah. and then we kept growing, we kept growing and we kept growing. And it was funny because I got a notification on my phone. You know how they do the memory, you know, the, you know, the memory. So a year yeah. ago this week, yesterday, uh, uh, we got a memory thing on the phone that said that we hit 3000 followers last year this time. And I'm like, wow. I say, okay. And a year later we're over 10,000 followers. And so I'm like, <laughs> that's I'm like, huge. Wow. Oh, it is. It's huge, and it's huge to to gain that kind of you know grassroots followers on yeah. Twitch, you know. And but right. that's that's just that's just how it is. And we just yeah. keep. And then I have I have another good friend on uh, Twitch that's from Australia, DJ Brisk, and um, he told me once he hit ten thousand, he says it just took off for him. So he said, just watch. He says, watch what happens. And I'm like, okay. You know, and so now all of a sudden we're at eleven point five, and like we oh he means took off and just it just a lot of yeah. people start following yes. at that point right right you know because now you're on a different you know you're on a different level you're on the opening page you know you're you go to the top of the list for the recommended because you recommended. have more you know you know and all of this and uh, right know, it's probably like I, their site knows okay this person has ten thousand people that have followed them you know and this right. many subscribers like we need to show this yes. to other people right you know and so it just um what we do with it is uh it's it's amazing to us because this once again it's a different life that we didn't have but yeah. now it's a life that we do have you know and so we we embrace it and we keep growing with it and we keep you know we're, we're not going to stop you know yeah we can't stop now you know because what's as i said this is our life you know, so four are you nights on a week, every day, every night? No, no, uh, four nights a week. Mondays, okay, Wednesdays, that's Thursdays, the... yeah, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And every okay. night is different. You know, we do different different music every night. You know, Monday nights we usually do. We call it uh, Magic Mondays. Magic Mondays we just kind of go wherever the hell I want to go. You know, it's, yeah. it's sending around. You know, sending around us musically. You know, mm -hmm. wherever. Like last night, I got into Magic Might mode and just started playing all my own stuff. Right. You know, and we did that for probably three hours. And I was like, and I played more of the newer stuff. I really didn't delve into none of the old stuff, you know, and it's like, wow, I didn't realize it was that much, you know. Yeah. And then on Wednesday, Wednesdays, we call it 808 Wednesdays because it's all about 808s and remixes, you know. Oh, and okay. We like to call it, we call it a left turn. So it's like you'll be listening to something and it's a remix and all of a sudden it makes a left turn on you. You'll be like, okay, where'd that come from? You know? Yeah. So that's that's Wednesdays. Thursdays is our hip hop night. And uh that that's always a fun night, uh, because it's straight hip hop. You know, it's just right. us wherever we want to go hip hop wise, that's where we go. So I always 
our joke for that night is, okay, we're, we're good on the plane. We're going to Seattle right now. and We'll stay in Seattle for a little bit. Oh, we forgot somebody. Got to go back to L.A. and pick somebody up in L.A. You know, <laughs> back on the plane, you know, we'll bounce back down. And, you know, but yeah. we might have been in L.A. at first. And then when we go back to Cali, then we're in the Bay Area, you know, then yeah. playing E-40 and, you know, and Souls of Mischief and all of that, you know. And so, oh, we got to go to the East Coast, you know, we, let's get on the plane. We're going to, you know, and so that's our joke on, on right. Thursdays. And it's fun. You know, it, it's just fun. And then on uh, Fridays is old school night. Just whatever we want to do old school. And then Saturdays, I'm I'm at a club. I play, uh, you know, either I'm traveling or, you know, I'm, uh, I play at a, a club in Orlando called Blue Martini. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Blue Martini. I actually, yep. I've DJed there one one time <laughs> where I was like oh, wow. behind the bar. Like, aren't you behind? Like, I was behind the bar. Or no, where on was stage. it? Was I in Champ? I'm on a stage. Yeah, I was on, on stage. stage. Yeah, but, like, I was on a stage the and the bar was in front of me or something. Yes, I remember. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I yeah, played the, the there. Tampa, yeah. The, the one in Tampa closed. It closed a while ago. I'm okay. In, I'm, I'm, in the one, yeah, I'm, I'm in the one in Orlando. I'm pretty sure it was Orlando, but I could be wrong. But, yeah, I remember I was – I did it one time. It was. I had a really good time. Um, oh, that's cool. So, that's your Saturday night residency if you're yeah. not traveling mm-hmm. somewhere or have some other right. thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And has the has Twitch led to you doing any other like private um, digital gigs or virtual gigs or or things like that? Has well, it led to other things you haven't thought of? Not yet, and people have been trying. Um, but I'm really really careful as to what I tie myself into right now. Yeah, um, right. It's just a lot of craziness going on. I'm just kind of like, yeah, let's let's <laughs> wait this out for a minute. Um, yeah. But we did we did a we did a, a virtual party for 10k um and what we did like our key people our key you know people support us for our you know for our channel we did a party friday night and uh but what we did is we filmed it on twitch so it was it was in real life but it was by way of twitch as well oh wow that's cool and uh and so i had a you know a couple of uh djs that that we've kind of taken under our wings and we brought them in um so they played we had different sets for different setups. So everybody had their own setup. Everybody, like, I'm still, I'm huge with the green screen. That's that's my thing. I look, So we had to set all of that up. Yeah. No, and, I love uh, it. it. Your hard. green screen is crazy. Like, it looks like you're in. <laughs> I'm like, how does he do that? Like, you'll, you'll, I see you push the button, and then you'll be in a thing with, like, all these screens below you and above you, and then you have the stuff running, and then you go to, like, a spaceship, and then you're close up and far away. And, yeah. I love all the creativity yeah. that goes into yeah. the visuals. I, I, I know you're yeah. very visual. I mean, you're just I an all-around creative person, but I think you seem very visually creative just as much as the audio, from what I can yeah. tell. I, I am. I, I really <laughs> am. But keep in mind, like, I, I've i always liked video. Even when, you know, yeah. when Rain went and they started doing Serato Video, I was one of the first ones that they came to because I was doing pretty much videos. I, I always kept my turntables with me, but then I had the DVJs back then that Pirates yes. used to have. So I would have the DVJs. And so if I'm playing music and I wanted to go to a video, then I would automatically have a song already ready to go on the DVJ. And, you know, it's just like a CDJ. Have it, have your cue points, have it ready to go. And then all of a sudden the song right. will mix in and it'll go right to a video. And they would hit right. the switcher, and then the videos. And so that was that was my thing. So when Serato Video came out, it was um, it was a breath of fresh air for me because I have always been a video person. You know, yeah. I I, li- I love the visual aspect that people, you know, when they watch you, you know, it's yeah. just always fun. And um, like Nick was the person that was doing. Uh, and keep in mind, I, me and Rain, we, we we were like this until you know they disbanded and got sold or whatever. But um, right. Nick did uh, started Serato video for them, and then he and I were like this. But then when he left to go do his own thing with Mix Emergency, right. and then he was like, "I need you," you know. So I'm like, "I'm with you," you know. And so I followed right behind him. So okay. I was still with Rain at that point, but I was not using Serato video, and I still don't use Serato video. It's just I don't like what it does to your computer when you're playing with it. Um, yeah, you know. I mean, I love Serato. Shout to Serato team, but yeah. uh, I just did a video set for this um, specific thing for like a company. Like, I put together this crazy video set, and mm-hmm. I and I used to love Serato video. I would 
you know, I've did a lot of stuff with Second Nature, which I know that's you had a big I taught, connection I with. I taught Brett. I taught Brett. So that's what I was going to say. I know you guys wow. were like very close yeah. with the yeah. in the DVJ days and the Serato yeah. DJ days, and yeah. he's you know one of the best and and such a great DJ yeah. and video editor and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, he taught me video I, editing. That's funny. Right. Oh, that's so funny. I, that's crazy. Yeah. How crazy is that? Wow, that's funny. Okay, I'll stop. That's that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, all good. Yeah, Brett's the man, second nature, um, and the um um i remember oh, i lost my train of thought but it was something with with oh the video so the mix video. no right. mix emergency so then i came back and it was funny because i owned mix emergency but then i had to like rebuy it because i don't know it had been so long but i just restarted using it like less than a oh, year less than a year ago and same thing. I was like, oh, I can't use, you know, I figured out the NDI thing. Uh, shout yep. to Josh Carl in right. Boston, another video DJ. He taught me how to do the mix emergency NDI into OBS so I could basically broadcast through my Ethernet cable and not have the delays and all the different cords and the different things. And mm -hmm. that really changed the game. And mix emergency is just kind of ahead of the game on that, on that yeah. tip. So Big shout time. to them. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you still do video DJing at all? Oh yeah. Everything I do is video. One hundred percent. Oh really? Yeah. So everything yeah. you're playing is controlling a video thing on those screens in your Twitch stuff yes. too? Yes, it does. So you and have a video Thursday. output. Yes. And on Thursday oh. nights, my and on Thursday nights, pretty much I'm showing music videos the whole time. Right. I just, I saw, but I just, I guess I didn't put it all together that you were doing every single thing. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so yeah, do you have like pre, like does every file have a video associated with it or does it do that thing where they have, I forget what it's called. The Chroma, not Chroma key, but the. It just things. automatically links. It just links. Yeah. It'll link, it it'll just, link a file. If you don't have uh if you don't have a visual aspect with your file, then it just links and it just pulls, you know, you set up from you can set sample up a library, right? Right, exactly. Oh. And so I okay. have, I want to say like sixteen different visuals that I have set up, and then okay. if something doesn't have it, then it automatically links it up. But then I have right. it synced up till it goes to the tempo, to whatever yeah. I'm playing. So it it monitors it by tempo. So then the visuals kind of sit there and match whatever the song you know to the playing. It really oh, matches so the kick, right? It matches the kick. It doesn't really match the the, the nuances inside of the you know yeah. in, in between the kicks it just is but like kick, thumb and it'll like boom right yeah right it pick, it picked it picks up on the kick and then it goes from there but most of my files do have some kind of visual aspect to it oh okay yeah. mm -hmm. that's so cool i've been thinking more and more about um because i love video djing too and i got so into it and you know it was linked up with second nature and like je mm -hmm. you know from st louis and I, I know all Jay. these Je yeah. is, I mean, he's the man uh, I for so to many Jay ways. In a while. Yeah, uh, I haven't he, talked to him in a while. Yeah, I just kind of reconnected with him. I mean, we we always like are connected. We won't talk for years, and then I'll be like, "What up?" You know, mm -hmm. we're just like back in mm -hmm. talking about all kinds of nerdy DJ gear and video things yeah. and music and, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, it was um, I, you know, I love I love the video DJing stuff, and I've been thinking. Like, maybe there's some way to chop up. There's so many crazy quotables in these podcast episodes. Like, it would be crazy to to make, like, um, a video DJ remix out of, like, our episode. You know, take, like, some clip of you and then scratch it and, and make that the promo for some of them. I've been thinking about, like, brainstorming how to how to do that because I love that stuff, too. And, and it's so much fun, just inspirational to mm -hmm. mess with it. That's fun, um, man. Yeah, I think it could be cool. I mean, I, I love mm -hmm. I love all that. That's cool to know that you're still incorporating it in everything too. Yeah, especially um, when I'm live. Especially when I'm live. Yeah. Uh, in the club, because at Blue Martini, they I'm pretty much the only video DJ that they have there, and uh, right. so I'm up on the stage and the screens and the big screen comes down behind me, so everyone can see, and you know wherever they're at in the club, they can see the visual aspect. Now, mo mostly at Blue, I'm, I play predominantly house music. Um, so the visual aspect is really, really key, you know, yeah. with that one, you know, when I'm playing right. house music, because either it's the video or it's their video that they conceive for it, you know, yeah. so it's, it's very visual, you know? Right. 
Yeah, that's what I noticed about video nights. Like, I love doing it, but then sometimes if the crowd wasn't into it, it was weird. Or sometimes it would captivate them to the point where they'd just be staring yeah. at the screen. And then I'm like, well, shit, I'm trying to make them dance, most, too. It's like most, always yeah. that balance. Most of the people most of the people that are sitting at the bar because of where the bar is, they sit there and they just stare. Yeah. They stare at right. the videos because most of the time they don't get to see videos anymore, you know? Yeah. So you oh, don't, know. you know. There is no MTV anymore. And I always tell people, you know, MTV stands for Magic TV at this point because I'm the only place you want to see videos <laughs> at. You know, yes. so so it's just funny, you know, they sit and stare. But then the people that are on the dance floor, they sometimes they're looking, but they're having such a good time that they don't, you know, right. they'll look at it, but then they just they're just enjoying themselves, you know. Right. So it's uh, right. it's, it's it's a good thing. But I've been been at Blue Martini for eleven, going on twelve years, so wow. it's just kind of yeah. So they they're used to me. They they know me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And and so what are you working on musically now? Uh, we talked about all your past albums and, and songs and all that stuff. Um, do you have anything coming soon that uh, well, we will listen the, to? Yes, the new album is getting ready to drop uh, once the new single is out now, which is a title track from the new album. It's called Another Dimension. And uh, yeah. it's uh, I, it took me a couple years to work on to get this album done uh i didn't tell anyone i was working on it it was just i would just work and work and work and songs i like i keep and songs that i didn't like i got rid of you know and before yeah. i knew it it was and before i knew it i had a double album you know oh and, wow uh, yeah it's a, it's a double album and uh but it it came out good you know it, it came right. out really really good and what i did is i reached out to people that um i wanted to work with you know friends of mine you know um and like i don't know if you um well like I, I did a song with uh with scratch bastard you know he's on i did a new uh journey into scratching with him you know oh, and, and i Bi can't and wait Bi to do that yeah. oh it's uh it's kind of serious man um <laughs> uh it, it's it's kind of serious um did a song uh another dimension is just me uh with a girl named melly um she that came out good really 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 good that's probably one of everyone's faves on the album. Um, the next thing yeah, I did. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, I mean, I've heard, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but I've heard right. uh, say, quite say a few songs. Want. I've heard yeah, quite a few say, songs say on both the yeah. double albums. And I loved yeah. how, how different they were and how they were its own world of like just raw, dope hip hop. And then your old sound coming into the 2021, 2022 mm -hmm. sound, you know, mm -hmm. and where you are today. And not forgetting about the bass and the the no, break there. beats and the scratching <laughs> yeah. and all that but then incorporating new and old things you know and i mean um your manager had sent me a list of some of the people that you collabed with and was you know i mean I, am i allowed to list off yeah, some yeah, of them or? Go ahead. yeah because he ahead. also sent me a teaser that t-pain song um that you have with T. Yeah. That sounds really dope. Like, <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, what this is crazy. Like, yeah. when he comes in, like, it, his, it's all harmonizing. It's like old school T Pain with new and with that yeah. old Florida bounce kind of, you know, sound. And, yeah. Um, but with the up tempo beat, it, super dope, you know. And then yeah, I yeah, saw uh, you're going to have Chuck D, MC Shy yeah. D, yeah, Donald yeah, Glaude. Yeah. You know, yep. house music legend, uh, yeah. Bad Boy Bill, yeah. who's Boy Bill, someone else Gattel that's, Blaster. you know, an yeah. innovator in scratching over house music and, and you know, innovating things from back in the day. Ghetto Blasters yep. with him, uh, Dirt Monkey, yep. Dirt Monkey. Uh, yep. Crafty Cuts. Yep. Yeah, oh, Crafty yeah. Crafty's my boy. Crafty's my boy. <laughs> Crafty's Crafty and I, so yeah, dope. We've been, you know, we've been friends for years and years and years. And uh, when I started working on the album, he was one of the people that I wanted to reach out to. And right. I'm like, you know, because like I said, I wanted to work with people that I know because it would make it easier for us to do a, you know, to do a collab together. It's yeah. so much easier when you know the person, you know? Yeah. And um, so when I went, I was, I call him Martin, but when I went to Crafty, um, I said, yo, I said, yo, Martin, I said, I'm working on a new album. I said, I want to do a song with you. So he was like, he says, well, we have to do two. And so I was like, okay, even better. And so he was like, you do one, you know, for your project. And then he says that we're going to do another one for my project because he's working on his project at the same time. So nice. I said, perfect. And so we wound up doing two songs. So that's so and then, dope. I, and then, and um, so that was actually the first single uh, from the album. 
is the one I did with Crafty. That was the first song. And oh, wow. uh, it came out, it came out and it went number one on Beatport, like immediately. Oh, you know? crazy. So we were like, yeah. So we were like, oh, and it went and we weren't ready for the next single yet because the album wasn't done. And oh, okay. uh, so this was, this was last year that that happened, you know, and wow. we were like, oh man, but we did not anticipate how quick that was going to happen. And so right. then I thought that he was going to follow right back up with his song, but he's still holding on to his. He's waiting. So I played on the streams. He hadn't released his yet, but I I still play it. So got it. And um and I didn't mean to cut you off when you were going to say something about Dirt Monkey. I actually don't know much about oh. Dirt Monkey. Uh, Dirt Monkey's huge, man. Uh, he just he's an up and coming, and uh, just his style and just where what he's doing and what he's where he's taking edm is just uh, you listen you're like where is your head at you know it's <laughs> amazing just, i gotta check just, him out just inc- just incredible man you know yeah. so we will and uh you know we we become friends chatting you know uh good guy Really, really, yeah. really, really, really good guy. So just stay tuned. It, it, it's coming. Nice. You, Everybody on you know. this list seems like a good person, honestly. I yep. mean, reading down yep. it, they're all like amazing human beings beyond being yep. a legendary DJs and yep. producers. Like, like um, DJ Brace. I did, I did a song with DJ Brace. and Brace, Oh, DJ Brace. Brace. Yeah. Oh, man. Brace, Brace incredible. is amazing. Dude. Yeah, he created the, um, what's it called? He did it on the song. <laughs> Yeah, that little uh, guitar wah thingy. You know, right, whatever. it's like the yeah. tone play, yep. scratching, yep. stand-up bass type <laughs> thing. Yep. I don't even know. And, you, and you listen to the song that we did together, and it sounds like there's a just like a electric guitar being played through the whole song. Oh and wow! And it's not he. He's doing the guitar on the tables, you know, with his yeah. little pedal, and you know, so I'm doing the regular scratching, and so we're going. Crazy back and forth back you know back and forth embrace we had been saying we needed to do something together years and years and years ago and yeah. we just never could make it happen and so finally when i was working on this i said come on dude i said come but his name's mike too i'm like come on mike we gotta knock this one out he's like okay right let's do it you know and uh that's so we great. got that one done yeah that that song was bananas like that song was just straight crazy but that one i gotta that check was it out this, yeah yeah that was on this too uh but okay yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's, I'm gonna. It's, it's been I gotta, I gotta peep that. And I saw you have Hi, I'm Ghost um, Hi, on yes. the mic. DJ yep. Fix, DJ yep. Huda Hadia. Some of these Huda people. Huda, I'm not, Huda yeah. Hudia. Huda, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huda is a uh, is a breaks DJ. Huge in the breaks world. Yeah. Okay, and dope. He did the, uh, yeah. So he did the remix for uh, Another Dimension, and uh, ah, it came okay. out. Yeah, he, he, it came out uh, about three weeks ago now. Yeah, about three weeks, almost a month ago. Yeah, it nice. came out. So yeah, doing doing quite well, man. Just very very happy with the project and what we're doing and where it's going. You know. Yeah, I love it. And is there an actual release date? Speaking of, I have the shirt on too. <laughs> oh yes, look at that! <laughs> Another dimension with the Magic yeah. Mike logo for the M. Yeah, yeah, man. Loving it. That's dope. Yeah, man. Yeah, the song is dope. You know, it has that. You sampled uh, the Beastie Boys uh, "Intergalactic," like the yeah. the end of the song or or just that one yep. part where it goes that one part. Yeah. 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 and then it you just flip it to like your own I world did. like crazy yeah. different tempo <laughs> and then she's singing on it you're i mean it's it's really cool i love it's a different it. song it's different but it's me you know it's yeah it's my life and my world hence right. why i called it another dimension because when you listen to the lyrics I'm really just telling you my inner you know you welcome to my mind you know yeah and uh so that was my thing, you know. So when people listen to it and they listen and they pay attention to the lyrics, then it's it's welcoming welcoming them into my inner mind and, and yeah. to see how I think, you know. And so I mean, that's how I felt. Like when I was listening to the album, um, I really – well, first of all, I, yeah, I felt like I was – getting welcomed into your mind and i was like this guy's mind is crazy like in a good way (laughs) like yeah damn how is he thinking of some of this stuff because some of the songs were so nuts like layered with different things you wouldn't expect but then they're still funky and dope and like it was just you know unexpected in a good way which was so nice to hear and so much music is very predictable nowadays and it's uh, it was unpredictable, you know, just the fact that the two different discs were different and then all the songs on just the first disc alone. I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Like, 
some of it was like hard, you know, and it was just like, wow, I'm really getting a picture <laughs> into his brain of what is going yeah. on. And I love scratching yeah. and I've always loved it. So just to have that incorporated on everything. Because people just, don't do it anymore, man. People don't do it anymore, you know? Right. And it makes me sad because they don't do it anymore. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I'm a DJ. I love scratching. I'm never going to have a project that I don't have scratching on. It's just right. not going to happen for me. Right. You know? I mean, that's what got me into so much music, like Gangstar, you know, every, I could lip sync oh, or sing right. every DJ just, premiere chorus, you know what I mean? Yep. Even if it's just a scratch. Yep. And I remember hearing for my first time, DJ premiere in deep concentration, you know, and I'm like, yep. what is this? Like, this is life changing, you know, because I'm like, I've right. heard mixtapes, yeah, I've heard Primo. scratch sessions. And I'm like, and I and I had been into Gangstar for a while, and then had to go back to even hear that. I think because I heard it on something else, and I think it was also like the Buckshot La Funk era, like when Primo right. did that yeah. album with uh, Branford Marsalis, yep. and it was like yep. the jazz thing. And I'm like, wow, I love jazz, I love scratching, I love hip hop. This is all coming together. And then I heard that deep concentration. So. Yeah, I mean, you're keeping that alive, you know, that and... and, and trying it, to, man, you know, well, trying to. Yeah, I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's amazing. Um, well, I, I asked uh, the internet if they had any questions for you, and uh, we got a few in there, if you're willing to uh, answer them. Yeah, um, yeah, let's do it. All right, let's see what we got on here. Um, it's really DB, who's actually on, uh, I don't know if you know him, DB, he's on um, Sway Shit. in the Morning. Yeah, yeah, he's on Shade. Shade. So he's yeah. he's the man. Um, he just commented, many car speakers were destroyed <laughs> listening to this song, <laughs> Feel the Bass 3, <laughs> which is the oh, truth. Wow. You know, I mean, your songs probably were used at so many car shows and to test out so many of those fill up your trunk speaker systems and, you know, rave systems, you know, sound checks. I mm -hmm. mean, I can't imagine. And you probably cost people a lot of money because you blew the speakers and then you have to go buy a whole new cabinet or yeah, something. They got to go buy <laughs> new ones, yeah. Feel the, bass, feel the Bass was the first song to do what what it did. Because right. there, were no car, there were no car audio songs before Feel the Bass. Crazy. So Feel the Bass started, it started a whole evolution of just this whole car audio thing, you know, so. Wow. You know. I Which is a whole community like, and world it in is. itself. It I is. Mean, it is. It really yeah. is. Hence why I had to do a new Feel the Bass 7 on the new album. Oh, God. Okay. We got to yep. look out for that. That's yep. amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Let's see. So shout out to DB. Thanks for writing shout in. Shout out to DB. Um, yeah, shout out to DB. What else we got on here? Um, DJ Koo. Um, Florida, Koo. you know, Koo. I know uh, Koo. I, I know Koo. He just asked, do you enjoy being Florida man? I think he's kidding, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being Florida's a Florida man, man. but, yeah. uh, Koo, Koo's a man, dope, dope, uh, man. Florida DJ. Yeah. He, uh, um, he paid, he yeah. paid me a huge, he paid me a huge compliment. I played with him, um, about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, he does our uh, Mystic Mondays over in in uh, Tampa, right? And um, <clears throat> I woke up the next day to one of the best compliments that anybody could have ever paid me, and yeah. um, he he posted it on Twitter and Facebook. He said, "Magic Mike is the best DJ on the East Coast." Period. Wow. And I and I read that. And I said, "What a compliment!" Especially coming from him. Because right. he he's critical he's critical on DJs you know I know and uh, I and for him and for and for him to to pay me that kind of a compliment man it was a uh, it was a uh, touching you know it, yeah it let me yeah it got me you know so I was like that's wow huge. what a huge what a huge compliment from him man so shout out to Koo that that's my that's dude. dope it's so cool how yeah. you're able to really resonate with so many different generations of DJs and music lovers and music fans and all that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just amazing. Transcending all of it. Um, all right, let's see. La Di Da, DJ La Di Da, I think from uh, Texas or Austin, uh, definitely always contributing. Thank you. He said, I always wondered if there were any Florida cut sessions with Magic Mike, uh, Maga Zulu, two ghetto style DJs, or DJ Eddie B. Can we get some 80s Florida cut sessions questions? <laughs> so. Um no, because we were we were pretty much all living parallel lives at that point. Um right. 
Mega, yeah, Mega Zulu was way before me, before I got you know into the game uh, heavily. Um, yeah. The only the only thing, and it really wasn't a cut session. Me and Mister Mix had a battle. Uh, this was, oh God, it had to be nineteen eighty six, right when Two Live first came out, and uh, Two Live had a show in Orlando, and um, okay. So and in, in the club that I was at, they were uh, they I. It was the biggest club in Orlando at that time. It was called Electric Avenue. And then Luke brought Mr. Mix to the club to battle me, and I didn't know they were coming. And, oh, uh, wow. And, and then the thing is, like, crazy. yeah, it was it was crazy. And he, they didn't realize I started as a battle DJ. That was that was my thing. You know, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not, you're not going to come in my house and battle me. You know, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> and well, he did, and, you know. And then at that point, when I and then the thing is, when I went to Miami, and I started doing music because Mr. Mix was so big at that point, yeah, it, I was determined to not sound like him at all. I'm like, right. I cannot sound like him when I go down here. I have to have my own style, my own thing. Hence yeah. why I came out and how I, you know, had my style and and created my style when I went down there. Now he and mm-hmm. I, we good friends now. I mean, we're cool now. You know, right. but we went we went years without you know it was just like he, him against me you know, and uh, he crazy. he hated me yeah it, it was it wasn't pretty you know and back in, <laughs> back then it's good though We're maybe cool. it's like yeah. iron, iron sharpening iron you know you're like yeah. both yeah both building each yeah, other up fine. yeah now that competition fine, we're, yeah we're great now we we good friends now I I, I, I like Hobbs a lot man he's a good dude amazing know? that's cool to hear. Um, all right, let's see what's next. I think we got one more question. We'll get to DJ Scene, another amazing DJ, and another oh, huge that's my dude. Twitch, Twitch killing Scene, on Twitch. Scene is my dude, man. Yeah, wow. Scene's the man. Yeah. Uh, he wrote in and he asked, "What is one sample you always wanted to flip but you haven't used yet?" Ooh, I think I flipped everything I wanted to flip. <laughs> you know, when you when you've done. I have 25 albums now I have, you know, yep. I, wow. I've kind of, I've kind of flipped pretty much everything that I've wanted to flip, you know, um, right. and and it's kind of funny because when it's time for me to record, or if I want to dig for samples, I don't go to record stores anymore. I just hit my own collection because I've got yeah. so many, I've got so many samples and songs that I haven't touched yet, you know, and I just right. dig and I listen and, and then see, Oh, haven't done that, you know? Yeah. You know, but I've kind of, I've kind of flipped everything that I think I wanted to flip. Excuse me. Seeing that I was supposed to do a song together, and uh, we keep Sounds saying crazy. we're going to do it. Oh, uh, we keep saying we're going to do it. Haven't done it yet, but it's coming. But it's coming. Yeah, seeing, seeing, yeah, Brian's my dude, man. Yeah, seeing, that would be dope. Yeah, he is my dude for real. So he does. Uh, he does his own version of a backward scratch as well. He's so good at scratching, but if you watch yep. him, he pushes He's on the, the opposite side of record. The record. Yeah, yeah, like instead of like holding it and pulling it back, he'll be pushing it forward. Like I remember the first the time I saw it, I was side. like, "What am I looking at? Like, what are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, crazy. He does that on yeah. the opposite side. I see him doing the last dude. I can't do that. I I don't even try. My hand doesn't even go to the side or to the, that side the of the same. When he, does I don't that. know what he's. Yeah, it's crazy, but it sounds sounds incredible. Yeah, and it he's, sounds he's great. A beast. And it sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. good. Seen as a beast. Yep, that is my dude, man. Amazing. Well, um, are there any other, um, you know, things you want to get into, like for promoting stuff or anything people should know about that, uh, that we haven't talked about, you think? No, just the new album, you know, what's getting ready to come. Once we, uh, drop the, uh, you know, the single ain't nobody with T-Pain, the album should be following up right afterwards immediately. So we're, we're probably, okay. uh, shooting for a, uh, late February release on the album, probably early March. Um, so okay. when spring break, so when spring break comes, the album will be out. So amazing. You know, all right. Out. Yeah. So, so that is what we're shooting for the, the T-Pain song, uh, with all the remixes should be out, uh, by the end of February. And then right after nice. that, the album is coming. The album, another dimension is coming. So amazing. Yeah, and, man. uh, so you got any kind of words of advice for people listening out there or any last minute, just kind of statement you want to get you out know, there for people? My, my my thing is be yourself and keep practicing man you know don't close yeah. yourself off you know that's that's my thing don't don't be afraid to learn you know right just stay yourself keep practicing keep keep striving you know that's that's my thing 
That's huge. Yeah. And I think that goes back to the very beginning of the conversation, you know, just stay curious. I mean, and that's yeah. what will motivate you to do all that stuff. Yes. So keep learning. Don't, don't just don't close yourself off. You know, you know, right. there's a world out there that you, you, you want to be a part of, you know, you know, yeah. so just keep striving, keep striving, keep pushing. But most of all, please keep learning, you know, keep yes. learning, keep you, keep your mind open, you know? Right. Right. That's the truth. And, uh, oh, man, well, I, hopefully we'll see you. Uh, I'm sure you're going to hit 20K on Twitch pretty soon. So uh, I'll I be hope, in there man. for that I party. Hope, I hope. <laughs> I hope. You better. Hey, you might have to I come to town for that party. <laughs> okay. I'm down. I'm down. You're in, yeah, you're yeah. in Orlando still? Yeah. Or you're I'm in, in it? Orlando, man. Okay. Oh, Orlando, yeah. I'm not leaving. All right. I'll, ma oh, I'll make it out there eventually. My... My gigs keep getting, you know, booked and canceled and up and down. So we'll see where I end up. But uh, that would be great. I'd love to. Where you? You're in Texas, so. right? Where are you at? No, okay. I'm in LA. Yeah, I'm. LA, I'm, okay. I'm in LA. Yeah, out in California. Okay. Okay. Yep. And uh, yeah, I'm traveling this month for gigs. Like I'm heading to Boston on Thursday, and um, then going to da going to Texas, going to Dallas, Fort Worth on Monday. Then I'll be out in. I don't know, Park City, Utah, and Vegas. So doing some club gigs, but all my corporate gigs have been sort of postponed yeah. or canceled at the yeah, moment. Still yeah. going through this COVID. Well, tr trust me, I'm in corporate America here. So, you know, yeah. International Drive uh, is huge for us as far as, uh, you know, conventions right. and, and all of that. And they're, they're null and void right now. You no, know, then one crazy. Something, will, something will come and then all of a sudden it gets canceled. You know, so Yeah, that's I what happened to me. You. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was supposed That's to be wild. in Keystone, Colorado right now, DJing this corporate gig and it's pushed off. Thank God it's pushed off, but pushed off till April. Hopefully mm -hmm. stuff will be good by then. And uh, then, you know, you'd be able, we'll be able to pick and choose if we want to go do things live, do it on Twitch, you know, whatever yeah. works. Well, I'm keeping my Twitch. I'm not letting that one go. So I'm, no. I'm going to stay there. Yeah. I just refuse. I can't let that go now. So I don't think there's a point not, to letting it go. You know, it's especially no. if you have such an active community. And like you said, it's grassroots. It's built from the ground up. You can tell that your yep. community is real. I do see people that get on and try to use the favors and get the like, oh, how is there 1.2 thousand people watching them? But then not one person has commented in a really long time. Yeah, and there's right. no subs. And there's uh, they have like four a thousand followers i'm like what's going on here and is there even a point yep. to doing that are they just talking into a that's void dumb. you know and yeah, then you see other people dumb. and you can tell it's a real community you know just from your donations last night people are just <laughs> six thousand five hundred bits <laughs> 10 subs oh here we go here we go you know what i mean it's like they become your family and friends uh, like it's yeah. crazy yeah they look out for you man you know your fam takes yeah. care of you you know right that's, it's so it's so important man you know yeah Build, build and grow, you know? Yeah. And it's brought DJs together, I feel like, in this cool way. Uh, at least Big certain time. ones, right? Yeah. It's, it yeah. Kind of show the, the power that we have the, if the we ones, harness. Right. The harness ones that it. want to be with other DJs, then they're fine. But then there's some that just rather stay to themselves, you know? Yeah. You know, that's, that's not fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I, I there's yeah, enough room like for that. everybody. You know what I mean? It's there like, is. I want it. We need to keep teaching each other about techniques, about each other, about things, and keep inspiring yes. and motivating and just be together and just show that the power of DJs together will bring so much more to our industry and, like, you know, rising tide lifts all boats or whatever that, that yes. saying is, you know, like, right. the more that we bring things up, we will all go with it, you know, and then the hater people yeah. will end up drowning because they're trying to be all alone. They're trying but to it's be like, alone. Yep. We have to all be there for each other and, and help out. And that's what, what Twitch has taught us in the pandemic. And and just, you know, got to have that, that positive attitude. Yeah, man. Stay positive. Keep growing. <laughs> yes. Keep learning. It's just Amazing. important, man. Yeah. Well, yo, thank you so much for coming on the show and blessing us hey, with all you the stories. And, yes. Thank you for having so me, man. I'm, I'm glad we could get it done. Me too. Me too. All right, I will see you. Right, I'll see you on man. Twitch, and I'll see you in person yeah. uh, when I come yep. to Orlando. <laughs> yes, we'll we'll talk soon, man. I appreciate you. All right, Mike. Thanks so much. All right, all right, peace. All right. Appreciate you, Scott. Peace, man. All right, thank you to Magic Mike for coming on the show. That was incredible. I learned so much. It was so great to connect with him, and I'm excited to hear what is to come. Check out his Twitch streams. Listen to the album. 
and just connect with them in the future. Thank you guys for listening. The Beat Sorcerers. Make sure you keep in touch with me at DJ Spider on Instagram, DJ S P I D E R. Let me know what you think of the show, who you want on, all that stuff. I appreciate you guys listening week after week. I can't tell you how much uh, it means to me. We're building this show together. The 20 Podcast is produced by Beat Source. Join us next week for more interviews as we discuss music that matters to DJs. We're available on all platforms, so tune in, watch, listen, do what you got to do. I'm DJ Spider signing off. Peace.